What's going on everybody, it's your boy Jungle Jordan. We are here at the Houston Zoo. This is my first time at the zoo. I'm so excited. We have a few encounters ready for us. We gotta go inside and have some fun. Hi, how's it going? Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Heather. Heather, nice to meet you. Thank so you. what do you do here? Uh, I'm a health stock keeper here at the Houston Zoo. Health um, stock? So, yeah, so I take care of a lot of animals with hooves on their feet. Um, things like rhinos, giraffes, okapi, bongos, and today I'm with our anteaters. Okay, anteaters are not hoofstock. They are not, no, you're correct. Um, so our hoofstock exhibits are mixed species. That means that um, other animals live all together, even though they're not all hoofstock. So we awesome. have our tapers in this exhibit, which are hoofstock, uh, and then our giant anteaters are friends in this exhibit. Parasodactyla. Well. Parasodactyla, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like, uh, you know, the rhino grouping, tapers are in that grouping, it's a weird group. Anyways, yes. okay, so today you have this this interesting uh, contraption right here. Yes, this is a puzzle feeder that we're going to give to all of our giant anteater female. Um, inside here is insectivore pellets, um, so we don't actually feed our giant anteaters ants here, because they eat around 35,000 a day. Um, and we've got two giant anteaters, so there's no way that we can keep up with that many ants. Uh, so we feed them this insectivore pellet um, every single day. So that's what this treat is in here that she's got. Okay, so <laughs> are you just gonna like toss it in there? Or how are we doing that? No, nope. so we actually have a really nifty uh, termite mount contraption here. So we're gonna lower this down. We're gonna pop this puzzle feeder in and we're gonna call her over and see if she's ready to eat some snacks. Awesome, I'm excited, <laughs> let's see it. So I can see her there. You coming? Oh, here she comes. There she comes. Hi! See if she's walking up, they're gonna walk on those knuckles to protect those big claws that she has on those feet. She's gonna use those big nails to rip into ant mounds and termite mounds. Um, so to keep those nice and sharp when she's walking, she actually walks with her nails curled under her. So she oh, walks wow. on her knuckles. So here, yeah, there you go. She's gonna stick her tongue right here and get this uh, insectivore pellet out. So there you can see she's got this really long tongue in there. There she goes. Now that tongue is about 24 inches long um, and it's really sticky um, and that really sticky saliva that they have is what allows the ants and the termites to stick to their tongues as they're eating um, in those ant mounds. <laughs> there you go. So she's going to find, there she goes, she's going to find that anteater insectivore pellet inside that bag. Um, we like to feed our anteaters in a variety of boxes, bags, plastic bottles, things like that. Uh, to help simulate their natural eating ability, which again, they're gonna use those claws and they're gonna rip into those ant mounds and termite mounds. Um, so we allow them to rip, on, rip open these bags, rip open boxes, things like that. Um, it's a little bit more natural way for them to eat. Going yeah. On, what's going on with her that really skinny face? <laughs> those, yes, those so that, <laughs> that really skinny head that she's got there, that's gonna allow them to get their heads into ant mounds and termite mounds. Um, kind of like the feeders that we have here that you got to see a little bit earlier. Overall, they're really slender in their body, mm -hmm. um, but she's got that really gorgeous, really long haired tail. Yeah. Um, and when they sleep, they're actually gonna wrap that tail over them just like a blanket. Oh so, my yeah, gosh. Yeah, she's very cute. So I'm sorry, I just can't get over the, the, the fact that, that I don't think I knew this at all. They don't have teeth. They don't, no. So their mouth is just one big tube with that really long tongue inside And it there. doesn't, like, there's no kind of, like... No, I mean, it opens the, up the a little bit. The smallest little opening. Yep, okay. just enough for that tongue to come out. Okay. So when they eat, uh, like she's eating this insectivore, those pellets are going to stick to her tongue and she's going to slurp them back in. Uh, same insane. thing with an ant like mount. The tube. Yes. Um, <laughs> and when they're eating ants and termites, they're not actually immune to ant stings. Uh, so they only feed at an ant mound for about 30 seconds at a time, oh. just long enough to get the ant uh, ant hill kind of mad. <laughs> and then they move on to the next one. So those big claws, right? They're they're meant to tear open those yes. termite and ant mounds. Yes. And, but I've also seen that they can be pretty formidable against uh, they large can. carnivores yes. such as jaguars. Um, jaguars, yes. Right. So these guys um, do face a number of threats, number one being jaguars. Um, they can definitely stand up on those back legs and use those nails to protect themselves. So do you have, uh, do you work with her? Is it protected contact? It is. Um, it's a little bit modified. So we are free contact. Um, if we have another person with us, if I'm by myself, we are protected contact. Um, they are pretty gentle creatures, but because they do have those really long claws for our safety and hers, uh, we don't enter in there if we're by ourselves. So. Okay. So how long have you worked with her? I've worked with her about three years. Three um, years. Yeah, and Olive here is 14 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, so What's the lifespan? 
Um, with us in human care, they're easily going to live to their late uh, teens, maybe mid to, to late 20s. Um, unfortunately, in the wild, not so much. Some of them would be lucky to live to 14 years old um, for a number of reasons. Habitat loss, um, as the Pontanal is getting a little bit more urbanized, they are losing their homes to deforestation. Um, they have natural predators, things like the jaguars. Um, and unfortunately, these guys are roadkill. Um, as vehicles uh, are making their way across roads in the Pontanal, these guys are being hit on the sides of the roads, which is unfortunate. Um, these guys are also poached for bushmeat as well. What's the connection that you've made with her? What is that like? It's amazing. Um, I had never worked with giant anteaters prior to coming to the Houston Zoo. Um, so they're a species that are a little weird looking, a little funny looking, um, but they're just so specialized in what they do and they absolutely just made a connection for me. They're, they're really different animals and not very many people know a lot about them. So it's really great to be able to talk to people about giant anteaters and how cool uh, of a species they are. I can really see are. you're shining about yes, you're talking they, about they are, it. No, I love um, that. They're really, really fun. Um, they're really fun to enrich. Um, these guys absolutely love peanut butter. We can put peanut butter on anything. Peanut butter is an avocado, um, and they absolutely love it. And uh, they're a lot of fun to work with and train with. Well, let me ask you one more question about yeah. you, because I like to hear about you. <laughs> um, what keeps you coming back to work every day? My passion for animals. Um, we love getting to work with these animals. They are ambassadors for their wild species. Um, so it's great uh, to educate people on what these animals are, where they're from, and what people can do to save them. Uh, we absolutely love animals here, uh, and getting to take care of these guys is just one of the best things that I can possibly uh, be able to do. So. Awesome. Well, Heather, thank you so much You're for welcome. showing off this beautiful yeah. girl. Olive, this such a big girl. This was so much fun. I love her big bushy tail. Yes. But okay, I have to go. Okay. But nice to meet you. Absolutely. All nice right. to meet you Bye. too. Bye. <laughs>